If you struggle with stress eating, boredom eating, eating when you're sad, this video is for you. Welcome to our series where we are breaking down all 10 principles of the framework known as intuitive eating. We have already covered principles one through six, so today we are going into principle seven, which is to cope with your emotions with kindness. If you haven't watched the first six videos in this series quite yet, I will leave them linked below in the description. Emotional eating is something that so many people attest to struggling with. This may sound kind of backwards, but it's actually okay to eat emotionally from time to time. I say this all the time, but eating does not exist in a void and we eat for more reasons than just needing physical fuel. At the time that I'm recording this, we just celebrated Thanksgiving here in the US and many of you likely ate out of celebration of the holiday. You may not have perfectly honored your hunger and fullness that day and that's okay. Sometimes after a stressful day or a stressful week, we like to order a pizza and just veg out on the couch while watching TV. Will eating this pizza solve whatever caused that stress? No, of course not. But food can be one of the ways that I choose to cope with stress in that moment. Humans are just emotional creatures by nature and without emotions, we just wouldn't even exist as a species. Diet culture is always demonizing emotional eating, but you do not have to feel guilty if you emotionally eat. I mean, think of a world of just emotionless eating where we feel absolutely nothing tied to our food choices. That sounds pretty boring to me. Now, eating emotionally is not always going to feel good. The key word here is choice. When you intentionally choose to use food to help you soothe an emotion, it will likely help you feel better. But when your emotional eating is impulsive and reactive, it's likely gonna lead you feeling worse than you did before. I call this uncomfy emotional eating. And there's a few ways to know if your emotional eating has become uncomfy. First of all, if it is the only type of hunger that you're honoring, it's likely impulsive and reactive. As a reminder, there are four different types of hunger in intuitive eating, one of them including emotional hunger. Again, it is totally fine to eat emotionally, but it's likely not gonna feel very good if that's the only type of hunger that we're honoring. If you wanna learn more about the other three types of hunger, I will leave a link right up here as well as at the end of this video. Emotional eating is also gonna be real uncomfy if you're always feeling guilty afterwards. We gotta remove guilt from the overall eating experience as a whole. Even if you do identify that there might be some work to be done with your emotional eating habits, feeling guilt is never going to help you get to that place. There is no need to feel guilt or shame after any kind of eating, including emotional eating. And I know I've said this, but I really got to get this point across. Emotional eating also becomes uncomfy when it is our only way to cope with emotions. I often have my clients create what's called a self-care toolbox, which is simply just a list of ways that they might choose to cope with certain emotions. And again, food can be on that list. We can use food to cope, but we're really going to feel a lot better and cope more effectively if we have other tools in our toolbox to use. Just like when you're doing a house project, you know, a hammer is gonna be really helpful for certain things, but you're not gonna be able to use a hammer for every single project in your house. So this toolbox could be just like a note section on your phone or a physical list in a notebook. But I challenge you to write down each of the emotions that typically lead to you eating emotionally and write out other things that you might use to make yourself feel better. Again, food can be on that list, you know, write it on there to help normalize that concept. And consider what else you can do when you're feeling bored, stressed, sad, angry, lonely. And I know it's not always realistic to be like, oh, I'm feeling very sad. Let me turn to my notebook and look at my coping strategies that I wrote down. Sometimes the way you react will be impulsive, reactive, and that's okay too. We are not looking for perfection here. But having this self-care toolbox may help you to slow down a little bit and react with more intention. Along with having this self-care toolbox though, it is also very important to check in with yourself regularly to ensure that you're meeting your basic needs. Because of course you might be inclined to eat emotionally if you're not having your needs met. Common triggers for emotional eating include a lack of sleep, a poor work-life balance, poor stress management, over-exercising, and of course, the one that I see the most often, not eating enough. If we're not eating enough and then boom, here comes a stressor, of course our first reaction is gonna be to turn to food to cope with that stressor. Being underfed is just compounding the issue of that impulsive, reactive, emotional eating. And that said, I do also wanna touch on a few ways that might help you to identify if you are dealing with physical hunger or emotional hunger. A few telltale signs that it might be emotional hunger where it'd be best to sit with it for a minute and consider how you wanna react to it would be that sense of 
urgency. If you're like, oh, I gotta eat right now, you're eating really quickly and mindlessly, you're just grabbing whatever you can, this is likely a reaction to an emotion and not just physical hunger. It could be both. Again, if you're also hungry, physically hungry, and experiencing the emotion, that drive to eat is only gonna be stronger. You also might find that you're not really satisfied after eating if you're eating emotionally. And especially if you're doing it so quickly and mindlessly and it wasn't really a choice that you made. Because again, like I said earlier, sometimes emotional eating really, really can make us feel better if we're choosing to use it to soothe. But it's likely not gonna really feel satisfying if we're just grabbing whatever, not really thinking about it. We may have physically filled our belly up, but we likely are not gonna feel that satisfaction piece. And finally, if you are feeling guilt after eating, it could also be a sign that you are emotional eating, especially if you have been telling yourself or if diet culture has been telling you that you're not allowed to eat emotionally. You might find that every single time you stress eat or you eat whenever you're bored that you feel super guilty afterwards. But like I've said, guilt and shame have no place in the eating experience. So along with meeting our basic needs and creating our self-care toolbox, one last strategy that might help with emotional eating is the concept of mindful eating. Now it is not always going to be possible to eat 100% mindfully because life is bonkers, but being as present as we can with the eating experience can really help us to identify if we're satisfied with the meal, why we're choosing to eat that particular meal, are we choosing to eat emotionally, is it because we're physically hungry, are we eating because it tastes good. The point is there are some benefits to checking in with ourselves while we're eating to whatever degree is possible with that eating experience. We may not always be able to just sit in complete solitude and silence and think about what childhood memory led to us choosing to have the chips and salsa does not need to be that serious, but it might help to sort of set the scene a little bit, light a candle, turn on some music, stay off your phone, get away from your desk, eat slowly, eat thoroughly, take our whole lunch break if we're at work, take note of the taste and the smells and what our food looks like. This can literally just be a quick check-in, like just be like, oh, this tastes sweet and crunchy. I like it. This is the meal that I was looking for. I'll be satisfied after I eat this. Even if you're with friends or family, you can just just sort of mentally think to yourself for a second about what's happening with that meal. Mindful eating does not need to be this like totally zen moment, but it might really help just to slow down a little bit and take your time with your meals and snacks. So what did we learn today, friends? Well, we learned that humans are emotional creatures and that emotional eating can be a very appropriate coping strategy. We learned that emotional eating can become uncomfy when it is reactive and impulsive. And finally, we learned that if we are consistently impulsively and reactively emotionally eating. Some helpful strategies could be to create a self-care toolbox, practice mindful eating, and make sure we are meeting our basic needs, which absolutely includes eating enough. That is all for principle seven. We've got three more, eight, nine, and 10. Be sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And while you're downstairs, make sure you subscribe so you know when I post part eight of this series. Thank you so much for watching today, and I will see you in the next one.